My name is Jonathan Goforth with Keller Williams Platinum Partners. Uh, thanks so much for watching this. Please subscribe, give this one a like. You're gonna wanna subscribe because I've got some videos that now I'm gonna be making to help train you um, as a brand new realtor, or maybe you've been around a while and you're frustrated. I'm gonna talk about the five biggest mistakes that I was making as a new realtor. Now, I've been doing this 26 years. I was 29 when I got in, and that makes me 55. The five biggest mistakes I was making back then are very similar to what you might be making now. And so we're gonna talk about preconceived ideas that I had when I got into real estate that were very far from what reality really is. And most realtors who are new have no idea what this job really is. You know, most people have not picked the brokerage they're gonna join. They just go to real estate classes, they go take the exam, now they've got a real estate license, but they don't know what to do with it. They don't know how to make a lot of money at it. So I was failing in many ways in my first two and a half years, and a lot of it, I was the problem. I just didn't know what to do. And I will tell you, no matter what brokerage you're with, it could be a huge one. You know, I was with Reese Nichols for 18 years here in Kansas City, the biggest brokerage. Uh, now I'm with Keller Williams. And no matter what training programs they have for you, classes, training, whatever, it's never good enough. It's just, the, and a lot of the agents, you know, this is not one of the biggest mistakes, but it's a problem. A lot of the offices, you're gonna get um, a lot of help. Uh, agents are volunteering their time to teach the classes, but when it really gets down to the secrets that they're doing, they're not gonna tell you. Now, I'm gonna tell you on here a lot of what I do because most of you don't live in Kansas City. I'm not gonna compete against you. <laughs> Many of you are from all, all over the country. <laughs> I hope you all have huge careers because I'm not selling where you are. We're not competing against each other. So let's talk about these um, preconceived ideas that were leading me into making mistakes. That's why I struggled so much. You know, uh, in 26 years, my office has over 300 realtors right now. Um, there's only one who has been doing it longer than me. That means when I got in, everybody who is a real estate agent when I got in has either died or quit since I got in. That's the kind of turnover that this business has. You know, they say it's similar to used car sales. Um, and I'd say that's because of a lack of training for that industry also. This is the best career ever known. It is, partially because it's easy to get in. The entry level is cheap. You don't need a lot of money to become a realtor. You just take some classes, you study the material, you go pass the exam and you sign up with a real estate office. It's, it's that easy. So then, what's supposed to happen next? And that's what this video is gonna be about. So please subscribe, give this video a like, and um, yeah, let's jump right into <laughs> number one. So let's talk about number one and number two kind of go together. This is um, a lot of the biggest problem when it comes to every sales job. So when I went to college, I got a degree in business I had an emphasis in that of uh, marketing and sales. And a lot of that was dealing with this kind of thing. It's uh, learning um, how to sell, no matter what you're selling, copy machines, cars, whatever it is. You know, a lot of it is dealing with rejection. You are gonna have to deal with rejection. So you are not selling houses. And that's what a lot of my videos, sometimes I say, you are not selling houses. You're selling yourself. You are the product. You are the brand. You're the image. It's your name, your phone number, your picture. It's your reputation. You are what you're selling. That's what you're putting out there because at first you don't have any houses. It's a completely different kind of career than a corporate sales job because you are the product. It's you or they would just go get a different real estate agent. You know, that it's not you're selling the house. Anybody could sell that house. You gotta convince people why they should use you. And so, yeah, you have to deal with rejection. And I mean, I struggled with this in the beginning. 
Now, here's a lot of where this is coming from. It's, um, there's not a lot of training for this. No matter what company you come from, you know, your brokerage, typically if you're with a big broker, they just kind of want to get a lot of people. Because typically about one, one out of 10 will survive into the third year. That's just kind of the average, about one out of 10, 90% fail within the first three years. So let's talk about how you can not only succeed, but thrive. So here's what happened to me over time, just kind of so you have a little background on me. As my career started taking off in, in years number four and five, I start selling a few million a year back then. And um, eventually I become the number one individual agent in my office. Um, I'm definitely in the top three or four. Uh, I'm selling some houses and I'm doing that by what a lot of my other videos are, just why you should subscribe. This is very serious. We gotta, we gotta deal with this with you because if you can't overcome number one and number two, number three, four, and five, it just doesn't even matter. You do have to deal with rejection and it's a fear. And that fear is what's going to hold you back from contacting your circle of influence or um, center of influence. That's what the C is for. Or the S is your sphere of influence. These are the people who you know, the people who know you. That's your, your, your contact list. The bulk of your business is going to come from this. It just will. That's where you're going to get all of your referrals. Every single referral you get will come from that list. And as you start selling houses, even to strangers, those people go in this list. And now those, those past clients are part of your circle of influence. And that's where you get your, uh, your future business from. I think the problem in that creates the embarrassment because I was, I was embarrassed. I did not have confidence. It's because nobody really goes to college to become a real estate agent. If you notice that we all kind of end up here, unless you got into this at 18, 19 or 20, 21 years old, you have come from a different career where you were unhappy or you failed, or you got fired, or you got laid off, whatever. Something happened, just like in my previous job, my, the company I worked for ended up going out of business. I didn't want to work for another company. I wanted to be self-employed. And I have a feeling all of you want to also be self-employed, but you got to be successful at it. And that's coming up in just a minute. Don't be embarrassed. Now, here's the problem. You go up to somebody, a friend, or a family member or somebody, yeah, the last job didn't work out so great. So yeah, now I'm doing real estate. I'm doing real estate. Do you uh, want to sell your house? I mean, I haven't done anything yet. I have no experience. I uh, just got my license and I need clients. Well, it's hard to do that with some confidence that going to convince somebody to use you as a brand new real estate agent. And that's why most brand new real estate agents never overcome this. And so they never get the experience that it takes to become successful long term. Last year alone, my team and I, I've got a team of 12 of us, we closed uh, almost 40 million in volume. Now, if you want some encouragement, put a calculator, get your calculator out, put 3% commission on 40 million. Tell you that's uh, roughly, give or take, right in there, about $1.2 million. Uh, so yes, my team and I, we were paid over a million dollars last year. We've done that many times. So yes, you can see my excitement. Why well, I want you to succeed. There is no other career possible like this. Do you realize at that level, you are making more money than probably your doctor? You're making more money than probably almost everybody you know. Um, I'm no longer embarrassed. <laughs> Doesn't matter now. I've already, I've already got a huge circle of influence list. But in the beginning, 
Do not be embarrassed to ask your friends for help. Ask them for uh, clients. You need them to refer you to their friends and family. Now we got to talk about rejection. You got to deal with this no matter what your sales career is. Now, here's what I, I need you to understand. You are in a career of sales. It's what you're doing. You're selling yourself, you're selling houses, but you are in sales. That's your job. You sell houses. And yeah, every single sales job comes with some sort of rejection. Where you have to let it go is don't take it personally. I still get rejection. I will send out a mailing. Um, let's say I send it to a few hundred people. My mailing list now is actually a thousand. When I do a mailing of anything, whatever it is, I'm going to get so many returned. And I mean, it hurts because I go into MLS and I look up so-and-so moved and I, I, I Google the address. I, I search the address in MLS. I was, did they really move? Sure enough. And I look at who they used. Now, why? Why didn't they use me? I have more experience than whoever else they used. Period. I, I just do. I've been around so long. <laughs> I've been successful for so long. Me having experience is not, it's not a question. I have the experience and they will go use a brand new agent. They'll use one of you. <laughs> and it kills me like, what did I do wrong? Why didn't they use me? And yes, you're going to be affected by it. And it's okay. That going, it's going to make you a better real estate agent, but you have to let it go. And I'm gonna tell you, this is, you have to forgive. You have to forgive the people that you would expect would have used you and they're not going to for whatever reason they're just not they're not comfortable they're more comfortable using somebody else for whatever reason maybe they don't want you knowing all their personal business maybe whatever it's okay you let it go you stay friends with them i'm gonna i've got stories about this on my other videos but we're gonna move on now let's talk about number three Okay, so let's talk about number three and four as we jump into this. As my career started taking off, so back in 2011, I had the privilege of writing a book and I wrote the whole thing. And see, here's my picture. This is published. You can buy this at uh, Barnes & Noble, Amazon. There I am. And um, that's about me. It has some endorsements that are really nice. This is 25 successful tips for, for new agents with a lot of hilarious stories. And um, if you enjoy reading, you can get the book. If you don't like reading, then just watch the YouTube videos because a lot of what's in here, I'm gonna be making into YouTube videos. And so all my videos are free. I don't that's why you should subscribe. You never know what I'm gonna put out there. It's just, you just never know what video I'm in the mood to make. This is number three and four, they, they all go together too. We're gonna to talk about this a little bit because when you're new, and um, I will tell you this, when I was new, what I asked for birthday presents and Christmas presents, I wanted stamps. And that everybody in my family knew I wanted stamps. I needed stamps. That's what I wanted. Nobody hardly wanted to do that. What a horrible gift to give me stamps. But I loved it because I needed stamps. And stamps are expensive. And number three, what my preconceived idea getting in, everybody's just going to use me. Word's going to spread. All my friends everybody I know, they're all going to use me. It's going to be easy. I'm just going to go from jumping into this career. I just get licensed and I'm going to be just swamped. So many listings, so many buyers. I'm going to, I'm going to show everybody how you do this. Well, that's not what happened for me. Now there are occasional one hit wonders. An agent gets in. I hope it's you. 
you get in and it just goes nuts. You get eight listings in the first three months. I mean, you make over $100,000 your first year. You are rookie of the year and it's just like, whoa, you are such a success. But for everybody else, and you're maybe fitting into this, that's not how it goes. That was a huge, a huge problem that I struggled with. But let's talk about the expenses. You are going to spend money and it's cheap compared to, let's say you want to go buy a McDonald's franchise or, or much cheaper when you want to go buy a Subway. Those are very expensive. You've got to have a loan and a thousands and thousands in cash and upfront money and rents and employees and you don't deal with any of that in real estate. Your expenses are really very low to be fully self-employed. And that's why I want you to treat it like a business. This right here is where 99.9% .9 of real estate agents totally make a mistake. They do not treat it like a business. I've got a chapter in my book, treat it like a business. I want you to work so hard at this that you're going to die trying. I want you to try that hard every day, all day long, every weekend, every day, every night, all the time. I want you to try, 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 do everything you're supposed to do and see what happens. And I, if you work it like that and you treat it like a business, you are going to thrive. But let's talk about a lot of these expenses because you're new. You may not know what's coming. You're going to have some fixed costs. You're going to have MLS, uh, which is quarterly or monthly. Whether you sell anything or not, you got to pay for it. Your realtor association is probably a pretty big fee at the end of the year. It's going to be a few hundred dollars. Depends on the state you're in. Around here, ours is between five and six hundred dollars. That's just a horrible fee because it comes at Christmas. It's the end of the year. You're gonna have flyers. Maybe you're doing uh, mailings or you're doing open houses, whatever. You're gonna be printing flyers. Well, that adds up. You need real estate signs. I will give you a piece of advice. Your picture should be on it. Um, get a good headshot and make custom signs. They're not cheap. Start out with two or three. And then, you know, now I've got more. Um, as my as time goes by, I have to get a new picture because I don't look like I did 10, 20 years ago. You're going to get some lock boxes. Um, mailings is your big one. And then you might be buying leads. Now, um, if you are going to buy leads, you're going to have to really budget that in. So whether it's Zillow, Realtor.com, Redfin, Dave Ramsey, whatever your lead source, if you're going to buy leads, you're going to need to be budgeting that in. So you have money to do that. Buying leads can be expensive, but you pick and choose how much you want to spend each month. Mailings, for me, are my biggest expense. Now, if you're going to do mailings, you, you need to know who you're mailing to. You need a COI list. Go through my channel of videos. I have videos on how to create a COI list to organize your circle of influence into a organized way, whether it's a spreadsheet, however you want to organize it, that's what those videos are for. We're not going to spend time on that. You've got to do that. That's where you're going to get your business from, assuming you know a lot of people. If you don't know a lot of people, that's going to be hard. You're going to have to resort to buying leads to create a career. And yes, you can build a career on buying leads. Um, with all this said, this is called marketing. This is marketing and advertising. And what are you promoting? What's the product? You. You are the product. You are what you are promoting. And um, I've got other videos that talk about how you do that. Treat it like a business. This is where people fail. They get in and they treat it like a hobby. You're going to make a huge career treating it like a hobby? No, you treat it like a business. For example, you know, it's been uh, earlier this year. Last year, what I did, well, actually, I got my broker's license, uh, gosh, two years ago, finally, for the purpose of uh, 
making my license in Missouri uh, with the Missouri Real Estate Commission into an LLC. So Go Forth Team LLC is the name of my uh, real estate license. And in doing that, I uh, create some different tax advantages. So for example, I bought my dream car um, two months ago. Yes, I have a video. I have a video. <laughs> this was a big deal. And I did this when I hit 10,000 subscribers. Um, my LLC owns my, uh, my new Range Rover. And yes, it's white. <laughs> it has red leather seats. It has a refrigerator built into it. It's crazy. It is seriously crazy. Uh, it's black painted wheels, red brake pads. It's everything I've always wanted my whole life. And this was the year I finally did it. But you have to treat it like a business. I don't own it. My LLC owns it and it can write it off. And so it's treating it like a business. Um, let's talk about number five. Number five was uh, the, the biggest thing that I struggled with. And this is why uh, the career has such a high turnover rate. It's the amount of time it takes to succeed. I truly believed I was going to be God's greatest thing when it hit the real estate industry. And I was going to take it by storm and I was going to show everybody how it works. It took me a long, long, long time. It was a very humbling experience. Um, it took a long time. In fact, let's talk about that Range Rover. I drove, and I still have it, a Toyota 4Runner. My Toyota 4Runner, um, it was, uh, I bought it new back in 03, 20 years ago, because I, I just take really good care of cars. I wanted something brand new, and um, I still have it. I do. I take really good care of cars. I just don't sell them very often. I still drive it on appointments. That Range Rover doesn't go on many appointments. I, I'm, I'm, I don't want to say I'm, I'm embarrassed by it. I feel like it's um, a lot of my price range is low, and I feel like I really probably shouldn't pull up on that yet. I'm still, I'm still easing into my comfort level of getting to drive such a thing. It, that's it's a it's a it's a huge achievement to have something like that. And I'm a little I'm a little cheap. <laughs> I'm a little tight, so it's taken me 20 years to do that. I've driven the same Toyota 4Runner my, for the last 20 years. I say that to you because many of you are not proud of what you're driving, and you think it holds you back. It, now, if you're missing hubcaps, go get new hubcaps. You know, Make it look decent, but you do not have to have a Cadillac or a Range Rover or a Mercedes or a Porsche to go sell houses. I did have a Porsche a few years ago. I had it for about a year and a half. I just didn't like the statement it made when I pulled up to half my listing appointments. So I sold it and I continued driving my Toyota 4Runner. It has, I've succeeded. I, one of the, so I got to be listed in Forbes magazine in 2019, 2020, and 21 as one of the top market leaders in real estate in the nation. And so that's where we go from this to what my career has become many, many years later. It's the amount of time it took to succeed. I, th this is why most people quit. So what could be happening for you? Because it's a, it's a tough real estate year. You know, overall sales are down. Number of transactions are down because a lot of people just start moving. Um, for a variety of reasons. And if you got a lot of buyers, it's hard to get them under contract because there's not a lot of listings out there to go choose from. We have a low inventory all over the country. We've been like this for, you know, three years. And so you're coming into a unique market where if you can get listings, it's, it's awesome. They're going to sell. And so stay with the career. I want to give you hope and encouragement that this, this career is worth fighting for. It's worth doing endless open houses. It's worth doing mailing after mailing. It's worth spending hours organizing your database of all the people who know you, your parents' friends, get your parents' Christmas card list, get your uh, wife's 
parents Christmas card list. Get everybody who might know you. You're not going to know any of those people, but they're going to know you because you're going to create a letter introducing yourself to them. And that's how you create a, um, a sphere of influence. And that's who you're going to be marketing yourself to. But yeah, you need to spend some money on it. Invest in yourself. Don't be afraid to spend some money on mailings. Yes, they're expensive, but over time, they work. What you need to ask yourself, how are you going to market yourself to people? How is it you're going to get clients? What made you get into real estate? Are you like me and you're making a lot of these mistakes thinking you're just going to, you're just going to take over. You're going to come in. You're going to show everybody else how you do real estate. And it may backfire on you and become a very humbling experience the amount of time it takes to succeed. So, uh, please subscribe. Give this video a like. I hope you um, get a lot out of this in understanding what the reality is of, um, of the real estate career. A couple of pieces of advice I want to leave you with. Uh, hopefully, your office offers training classes. If you're new or newer, you've been in it less than 26 years, I want you to uh, take advantage of every single class. I don't care if you think these are a waste of time. You know, I go to sales meetings. Sales meetings are just a huge waste of time. I don't learn anything. I'm not selling anything anyway. I don't need to go see all the top agents in the office get these awards because it makes me feel bad. That's not the mindset you need to have going into that. It's like that in every sales career because it should be motivating if you are a little competitive in nature. Don't let it make you depressed and deal with the rejection. You let it encourage you and say, you know, I can do that. I can do that too. I have it in me. I can do that too. It's going to apparently take a little longer than I thought it would. You know, a couple years is a long time to last uh, without income. But long term, it's worth it. So there should be a couple of videos popping up on, uh, on your screen. Check those out too. And um, do whatever it takes to succeed. This career is worth it. There are some opportunities that this gives. You know, I'm on a TV show now, Selling Kansas City with the American Dream. It, this just happened last summer. In my 25th year, this opportunity comes. I get to host a TV show. Uh, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna post a link to that right now. That'll be one of the two links that pops up. And uh, I got to put the marching band my kids are in at the high school. What a neat opportunity. It has nothing to do with houses on that one. It's just a moment to shine for the kids in the marching band to put them on national TV. Do whatever it takes. Do not give up. Keep fighting for this and you will uh, you will succeed. So check out my other videos. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Give it a like.